Hey guys, it's doing stuff with TNA. Travis and, well, Amy's busy, but we're working on this bike. Uh, problem is primarily it needs a new front tire. I don't have a front jack stand. I don't have a motorcycle lift yet. I am going to be getting one. Anyway, it's an older bike. It's like, it's a 2004 YZF 600R. The, um, what I've done is I put this jack stand here, put this board laying sideways like this underneath it, put my car jack, put it underneath about the center as far that way as I could get it, and slowly jacked that side of the board up. As I did it, I then stacked things. So as I lifted this side of this board with the jack, I stacked things up underneath the kickstand so that it would stay leaning a little bit to the left but not too far so I jacked it up until I could slide this jack stand under it so we've got the jack stand holding this 2x4 it's secure that's not going nowhere so um, it's just sitting on that and then I took the jack stand up under the exhaust it's not got that much weight on it so don't kill me on that it's it's very little lifting force most of the weights back here there is some but not a lot so once this was on the jack stands put the jack there and lifted it a little bit and then then this uh, this fender is held on by four little bolts take those off once we got those bolts off then um, oh before I even got the tire out of the air, I loosened the front axle bolt. Oh, that took a 19 millimeter socket for that bolt. So I, I loosened it with my breaker bar, then loose, took off the calipers. Somebody had extremely over tightened the caliper bolts, but broke them loose. They took a 12 millimeter socket. Once calipers on both sides were broke loose, just tuck them out of the way and then the tire comes out this is the speedometer uh, with a speedometer cable connects to and then this bushing comes out and we now have our tire free and the bike's standing you can see the tire has plenty of center tread but most of the sides worn off so we're going to get this tire changed all right so i have this tire changing stand it's bolted to the table and then i have this threaded rod with an old bearing and some washers this just helps me I'll show you in a little bit um, so what we're gonna do put this so I'm gonna put a bolt and washer on the bottom So this is a 19 millimeter bolt. We're gonna tighten this down a little bit, not too awful much, just to try to help it not, the tire not spin. Actually, we don't need to tighten this yet, sorry. So I have the tube right here. I'm gonna take the center cap out of it. I have one of these little removal tools. And they are sometimes too long for motorcycles, which this one is. So I have this short one that fit, works well with motorcycles. It just fits onto the stem. Here is the top of the stem, and this is the pin you're pushing on. And it just fits over the stem and then fits over that so it unscrews. You can see the threading is right there in the seal and the other another seal right here where the you know, the pin pushes that out I'll sit these over here out of the way so I don't lose them hopefully tires flat now now I can break the bead
you need a little bit of tension on it to keep the tire from flopping around. He's off on that side. So now, that's the easy part. The hard part, says most people, is what I'm doing now. So this tool, this tool has uh, this end on it, and this end, both sides have some, uh, I think it's HBDE plastic to protect the rims. And what you do is just shove it into one side of the tire. get it up under the bead once it's there you can pull it up and rotate it I'm gonna try and get this in position over here see how easily that just pulled that up now you know my brake rotor is a little bit in the way there, so I'm going to have to move this up higher, which means taking it back off. Now I've got that on, and I can tighten it up so that it doesn't move me. Got. We need a little spritz of lube. Help things along. Mostly off. All right. The same thing for the inner side. That's much easier on the inner side. All right. Old rubber's off. Time for the new rubber. All right. So this is a Dunlop Road Smart 2 tire. Old, new old stock. I got really cheap. They are directional tires. So that indicates the direction of rotation my next step is figuring out which way this tire rotated which i can do because i know the bushings all right so the speedometer went on the bottom so i can feel there's a little lip from where the speedometer went on the bottom and i know that speedometer goes on the left side of the bike when you're sitting on it therefore the tire direction of rotation is this way because when you're going if you stood this up so that that's on the left when you go forward it would roll this way now, since the direction is that way it goes this way now the next question is where's the heavy spot there will usually be a yellow or a white mark this one's only got a yellow mark a yellow or a red mark this one only has a yellow mark well 
it has it has some other blue and green marks too which is strange i can never remember which is which so i'm gonna look it up real quick so i looked it up on a tire website and the yellow spot is the lightest spot on the tire on the rubber the heaviest spot on your rim is where the valve stem is so you want to line the yellow spot up with the valve stem so here to here all right good enough all right push that partly on and we'll see if I can push it the rest of the way on or if I need to use a tool that's one thing that's hard about being with this elevated it makes everything easier except this part voila all right got that started by hand I'm going to get the lever in place so what you do is you take this part of it you're going to be spinning to the right just like I was to getting it get it off so slip that in and then you want to rotate it but you want to get the tire I'm going to try and get the tire B up on that ledge so that it stays down as you rotate. See, otherwise what it's doing is it's popping back up. So I've got the mojo lever in place. Now I'm going to push it there. And then I'm going to push this part of the tire down if I can. And then I'm just going to use a spoon to hold it in place while I pull on the lever. And watch that bead. Let me get you where you can see it better. So you just keep one side down. See how that bead just falls down into place? Keep pushing down back here. It'll keep going right on. Unless you do that. Which is the only fallacy of this tool. Because when that happens, you gotta pretty much take it back off to start over. Unless I'm doing it wrong. Which I could be. I ain't a master at this. And because of my area and lack of room, I have to spin the tire to keep going. So one trick about doing these tires is you do need to keep the bead of the tire that's gone in, in the center. Otherwise you're going to run out of rubber, room for the rubber to move. To get stuck, you can just stretch the rubber by lifting it, and that helps a lot. I've forgotten that trick. Almost there, guys. Voila. That's not too hard. It's a lot easier than any other I've done. So now we put the valve stem back in it. All right, so you're not supposed to reuse rubber stems, and here is why. That is no good. So I'll have to replace that valve stem. 
All right, guys, this is how I got the valve stem out. So you saw that it was already broke. So I took my valve stem puller and screwed it to the end of it and yanked it and it ripped in half. So it's a good thing we're replacing it. Then this side was left on the inside right here. All I did was use my spoons to pull the tire back, grabbed onto the edge of it with my pliers, kind of like that and it popped right out so now how to get the new one in so here's my new valve stem i'm gonna have to clean it up it's all dirty okay my valve stem cleaned up take the old valve stem end out of the puller stick this one in on the back side trick. The tire needs to go down far enough. This, the tire is not quite out of the way, but I'm hoping when I screw this valve stem puller on and give it a little bit of a pull, it'll pull right out of the way. Get where we need it to go. We pull it until it pops. Looks pretty good to me. Get the air and see if it'll air up. So if you're curious of what pressure that popped at. Fifty PSI? Not too bad. I'm gonna drop it down. Leave this runs it. 30 or 40. I'll go check in a minute. So, why is the F600R supposed to run at 35 PSI? I'm almost to that. Bingo, 35. Put this tire back on. Okay, so we're not gonna actually mount the tire yet. We wanna balance it first. So this is a jig I set up for balancing. This side has a little bit of adjustment. This side is straight. We wanna make sure we're level, which we are pretty close. Let's flip this and see. So, that side could go up just a touch. That's good enough. Okay, so now I bought this kit. It came with two sets of these and a bar with some cone shaped pieces. And what we do is just set these here, pick the tire up, put it on the down there so now we're just going to give the tire a little spin a little bit more than that and we will wait to see where it comes for rest this is old school balancing but it works well right, you see it's going back so there's a heavy spot on the bottom now about wherever it stops is where the heavy spot is all right so i'm going to put a mark down there where it's the heaviest this little chalk mark all right you can clearly see we set it on either side and it's going to fall down so that's the heavy spot it looks like it's not too bad though let's see let's spin it again to see what happens That time we landed there. So let's give it another spin and see if we end up somewhere. We might have to do this a couple of times. It might be that 
it's so light that it's just not landing where we would expect. Notice a pattern? This this seems like maybe center. Let's spin it the other way. Yep, right here. I'm gonna put temporarily a small weight there. So I have these little gray half ounce weights that are stuck together with tape. I'm just gonna cut one off. And then instead of using the tape, because I don't know if this is gonna to be too much, uh, I might have to drop down to the quarter. I'm gonna put this on using tape. All right, just razor blade cut that. Piece of blue tape with the weight right here. Hopefully that'll hold long enough for us to test. And spin it again. Yeah, the weight, the, the blue tape has a little bit of weight, but it's very minimal. Oh, so this is our heavy spot. So we wanna go exactly opposite that and put the weight. And then spin it and see where it lands. All right, still landing in the same place, so it's going to need more than. All right, let's try this. So, what you're supposed to do is after you put the weight on, put it horizontally and see. And you see this side start dropping? So, this side's still heavier. Even if I give it a little bit of a that way push, it still starts dropping. We need another weight here. All right, so now I have an ounce I've taped on. Let's see what happens. Looks balanced. I'll try the other side. Looks like that's still touch heavier. Let's see where it comes to rest at. It's pretty close. I'd say that's pretty good. That's just a hair more weight here. I might try putting this one here, see if that's too much. The tape doesn't want to stick no more. Oh yeah, that seems better. Let's try it this way. Hmm. Right, I think I need to shift it one way or the other. I'm not sure. Seem to want to. I'm going to shift the whole thing. All right, we're going to take these back off and start over. All right, that looks good. How about this? This side's heavier. Well, I'm going to call that. That's as close as I can get it. We'll see how it rides. I'm going to put a mark right here. Stickies. So then we just peel this backer off. But before we stick it, we want to clean it with some alcohol where it's going to go so it don't come off. I'll take her for a ride and tell you how she is once we get her back together. All right, guys, don't forget to put your spacer in and speedometer sensor, whatever you want to call it. You see that little groove right there? There's a little 
piece in the back, you can just see the edge of it right at the tip of my finger, this slides in. All right, got that torqued to 45. I'm gonna tighten this down. I don't see a torque spec listed for this, so I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate. All right, now we put the brakes back on. Looks like I got a brake leak from somewhere. It's really, really slow. I ain't too concerned. Spread these calipers out a little bit with a flat head. That usually works well. Not always though. I think my leak is my drums. These suckers need to be rebuilt. Ain't happening today. Let's start to 25. <laughs> She's all ready to go. Give her a test ride, see how she does. I'll show you guys how I'm gonna drop this off. You're not gonna like it. All right, I just took the jack out of it. Pumping my forward brake. Getting it cinched back down. I'm gonna take this out. Not that bad, you wanna see? We can lean down quite a ways now, but it's still stable. I'm gonna mostly do it like I do taking my bike off the stand, just pushing it forward, letting that fall. 
Easy. That wasn't so hard now, was it? Okay, first time she's been cranked in a bit. Good.